Hey fans, it's me Aaron for a comic show. We got another great week of comics, including a big book that hit really hard for me that I really super loved. And I can't say the exact reason why I am so giddy about it because that would be a spoiler. But in Humans vs. X-Men, number one was perfect for me. I loved it. Like they could have subtitled it how the X-Men got their groove back. I mean, if you heard me over time, I used to be the biggest X-Men fan. Obviously, as, as a, a kid, I loved the cartoon and the video game, and I, I got this series for all the, the, the golden age of, of uh, Jim Lee. Like, I know the golden age is Byrne and, and Claremont, but mine was, you know, after that. And I love so many of the characters, and Marvel has been kind of neglectful and kind of, um, I don't know. They, they, they've replaced so many of the characters with other characters that I can't really say it's just the X-Men, but they put a lot of emphasis on the Inhumans. And I honestly, um, in some ways, I could give a shit about the Inhumans. They're just like the most arrogant pricks. They're arrogant royalty, like we're the uh, next pinnacle of humans and we have these powers and this tradition and these myths and this culture and we're all part of this royal family and you know like I can see the flaw in everything and you know like if I speak you're dead and that's all this like yeah, yeah we, I get it I get it you're inhumans whatever I love the x-men and in this the inhumans get their comeuppance and uh Black Bolt oh my god oh my god oh my god like I freaking loved it and my x-men are back they're kicking ass. It's a fight for survival. It makes sense why they're fighting because they're fighting for their survival. Beast, basically, if you've been reading in Humans or if you read issue zero, Beast is like, eh, I can't do anything about this Terrigen cloud. It's going to kill all the mutants. We can either die or we can leave the planet. And uh, Emma doesn't take that kindly. And she says, or we could uh, fight them and win and destroy the cloud and tell them to F off and screw their hokey religion of Terrigen and their culture and all that BS because it's killing us. And uh, I like the themes and I like that my X-Men are back. And if you are a old school X-Men fan, if you're a big X-Men fan, you need this book. Uh, Soul and uh, Lemire nailed it. Uh, Lionel Yu's art's great. And seriously, consider buying this if you are an X-Men fan. And if you're an Inhumans fan, I'm sure that they will get there as an issue too. I'm sure that the pendulum will swing and, and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll win one, one round or whatever. But this issue, it's all X-Men get their groove back. It's awesome. And uh, Marvel's calendar came out this week. So if you get to your comic shop fast enough, they might have one for free for you if you ask. So we'll have some tomorrow. Um, Doctor Strange Punisher Magic Bullets by John Barber. This was uh, a cool team up. It was very odd to have Punisher need uh, mystical help. Punisher needs Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange agrees to help him and they're uh, badass bros. And the first issue was fun and I enjoyed it. <laughs> Moving on to Hawkeye. Uh, Kelly Thompson's writing this. It's a new Hawkeye number one. It's the female Hawkeye. And she's basically kind of like um, Jessica Jones. She's a private eye now and she's doing private investigative work and it's just a lot of fun and it's clever and uh, I dug it. I mean, I'm a big Clint fan, but that was cool. And I always liked her issues in that Hawkeye run and now this is what it is. So if you like that, if you liked her issues, if you like her, get it. Uh, moving on to Guardians of the Galaxy Grounded. This is a, a Marvel now, it's Grounded starts. They're on earth, they're, they're marooned on Earth, and this is the thing back on Earth doing thing stuff. Um, getting back in with S.H.I.E.L.D. and reminiscing about the good old days, and if you are a Fantastic Four fan or a Thing fan, you need this. Like, even if you weren't reading the other Guardians issues. So, it's a great, it's a great uh, single issue story with the Thing that I really enjoyed. And next issue is Groot. I suppose Groot um, doing Swamp Thing type stuff with the trees on Earth and you know, environmental stuff. So we'll see. We'll see what the next issue Groot thing is. But it's definitely Groot, and it's definitely going to be something about the earth and trees. So uh, this issue was a great thing issue. 
and Spider-Man 10. Don't read this if you are very invested in the outcome of Civil War 2 because it spoils some stuff. Because Civil War 2 should be over, issue 8 should be over, or it should have ended with issue 7. But uh, issue 8 hasn't come out and you see the big death, you see the dead body, you see it. I'm not saying who it is, but you see it. And if you don't want to see it, um, I mean, if you're buying this book, absolutely buy it so it doesn't sell out and you don't get it. But uh, maybe don't read it until you read Civil War 8, maybe. That's uh, just my, my warning. Um, this book, Batman Adventures and Team Ninja Turtles Adventures number two, issue one was so much fun. The original Batman Ninja Turtles were not the animated versions. They were the comic versions. I really enjoyed that. I saw this and it's all they're doing a sequel. I'm like, oh, do they really need a sequel that was so good? And doing the animated version, yes, yes. And mainly yes because of this. Look at Harley. That's the animated series Harley. And it's great. I love that animated Joker. I love that Harley. I, Batman animated series is my jam. And to have them with animated turtles, it gels well, it's fun. And uh, I enjoyed it. So it's not anywhere near as serious as the first volume but it's animated, so it can get away with it. Uh, DC Rebirth Holiday Special is out. It's thick, it's not stapled, it's bound, it's 10 bucks, has lots of stories. Some are actually good. Um, I really enjoyed the Constantine Wonder Woman one. I really enjoyed the one with Batman and Detective Chimp. I'm a big Detective Chimp fan. So if, you, um, if you're a DC fan that wants some holiday stories and wants to see perhaps some characters in here that you haven't seen lately, get it. If not, you know, it's 10 bucks. I don't know how much money you have. <laughs> Moving on to Flash 12, the Shade's in here. And not Shade the Changing Man, but Shade the Golden Age villain that was a um, antagonist for the Starman series. And there's things he says that makes it seem like the Starman series might be back in continuity with Rebirth. And for that to happen, there has to have been a Golden Age Starman, which means there has to be a JSA. And we already saw the uh, Jay Garrick helmet in a previous issue, I think issue 10 of Flash. So it seems like Flash might be what is going to be where the JSA comes back to begin with, maybe. Hopefully. I'm hoping. And Shade says something really weird at the end of it. Really weird. And I like that. Um, moving on to Vendetti's uh, Hal Jordan the Green Lantern Corps. This issue was great. And this, the end reveal was awesome. And it doesn't matter if I already knew what was going to happen. It was still totally badass. And uh, he's killing it. And with this issue, you can see the fold out that has this, the um, Suicide Squad versus the Justice League. Here is the, uh, the team of villains against uh, that the Suicide Squad and Justice League, I guess, have to team up to fight. And uh, Lobo's on it. And then Lobo is... Uh, going to join the Justice League, supposedly. And uh, this issue of Suicide Squad, uh, for some reason I don't have it on me. I read it in the bathroom. Maybe I left it in the bathroom. I don't know. I've been drinking. But this issue of Suicide Squad this week is a prelude to Suicide Squad versus the Justice League, which is coming, I think, next week. And it was cool. It's great. I'm super excited for that. It's the first crossover of Rebirth. I've been loving Rebirth. And to see Justice League, Suicide Squad fight, and then have these villains that are the big antagonists they have to take out. I'm happy. I'm happy with that. I'm excited about the new Justice League of America book. So DC is, is doing good things. And finally for DC, Dark Knight Returns the Last Crusade. Got a deluxe hardcover edition, just like all of the uh, DK3 uh, deluxe hardcovers. Every issue of that had one, so this has one too. So um, if you got the other ones, I guess get this one. Um, if you already bought the regular size one, sorry. I don't know, I didn't know this was coming. But if you didn't, get it and put it with your other hardcovers because it'll look great. Moving on to image. Rockstar's number one is out. This, uh, look at this beautiful cover. It's, uh, it's Joe Harris. Uh, the art is great. I've never seen this artist before, Megan Hutchinson. Um, it's beautiful. And every conspiracy theory, every black magic thing, everything about Rockstar's that was ever rumored is true. And it's all in here. Uh, Paul McCartney died and had, was replaced. Um, just all of the stuff, Ozzy biting the bat head off, all of the, all the black magic, all that stuff is true and it's in these pages. And 
it's it's good. If you like conspiracy stuff and you like rock and roll, you need this. It it was I've already read the first three issues, so I'm trying not to um, spoil anything. And I'm not spoiling anything by saying what conspiracies are. Any conspiracy you can look up on, on Google. Um, but it's great, and Joe Harris really nailed it. And Joe Harris uh, was a rock star himself, so there's that. You know, Google that. Moving on, uh, Green Valley. This is uh, Max Landis's book by Image. This is the point where it's doing that twist that I knew about that um, makes it so it's not just a book about old-timey stuff, and I'm really enjoying it. I enjoy all of uh, Max Landis's output, his content. He might be a pompous dick, and uh, I might disagree with things he says in interviews, but his comics are good. And he did that one movie, right? Uh, moving on. Uh, Rebirth 3 is out. Mark Miller and uh, Greg Capullo on art, who, you know, the big Batman New 52 artist with Scott Snyder. I'm enjoying this book. Moonshine 3 is out with the 100 Bullets team of Az and Rizzo. It's um, basically mobsters versus the, um, versus the FBI in the woods where they do their moonshining. I'm enjoying that. It's really dark, really bloody. Um, Birthright Volume 4 is out. Joshua Williamson, dude that writes Flash now. He's great. Check out Birthright. Get Volume 4 if that's what you're on. If not, go buy Volume 1. Descender 3 by Jeff Lemire is out. Um, this is weird. Young Terrorist 2 is out. Number one came out like seriously like a year ago. And I enjoyed it. I love Black Mask. I, I dig the book. It was kind of like um, The Invisibles, Grant Morrison's Invisibles from Vertigo, but for you know, a modern generation. We have uh, Second Prince of Issue 1. Issue 2 just came out. These are thick as hell. And it's really not at all for kids. It's hardcore. And it's uh, very subversive. Speaking of subversive, um, Black 3 came out. I, I'll put my fingers over the things to censor what is said on this cover. I ordered both versions. I ordered the censored version and the uncensored version. And Diamond Comics only sent me the uncensored version, which has racial slurs on the cover. I thought probably it would since the book is called Black and it's done by uh, black creators. The story is great. It's about... Um, what if there were like superpowered people, kind of like mutants, but it was only like a one half of one percent of black people? And is that why black youths have been so uh, oppressed over time and targeted by the rulers of uh, society because they could uh, manifest these powers and then upset the apple cart of uh, white supremacy, obviously? You know, and I'm saying this, this is the story. This is not like me on a political grant. This is the story. And it's, a, it's a, a really interesting story that I'm enjoying. And it's like, OK, the X-Men are feared and hated. And the X-Men were an analogy, a metaphor for you know civil rights movement, obviously. And um, obviously, Professor X was not Malcolm X. Professor X was uh, Martin Luther King, nonviolence in a wheelchair. Um, and Magneto was uh, Malcolm X. So um, yeah. That's kind of what this is, but in modern times and with all black peoples, and it's good. But um, I only have the racial slur cover, um, so there's that. And <laughs> Hillbilly's out, Albatross, it's Eric Powell's book, issue four is out, it's late, but um, it's good. I love his work. Uh, this, is, this is as good as his goon. I'm really enjoying it. Steven Universe has a special, 2016 special, double-sized, it's all just, making things weird at the beach. Why not? It's fun. I love Steven Universe. I love his belly button. Uh, Invader Zim Volume 3 is out. I had to talk about that. And finally, um, Red Sonia, Issue 0, 25 Cent, Issue 0. It's here. It's written by uh, Amy Chu. We'll be giving it out free with every purchase tomorrow. And it has a crazy, crazy twist at the end, a really crazy twist of Red Sonia, where if you don't like the sword and sorcery stuff, if you don't like fantasy, this is just fine for you to get into because it's a mashup. So um, I'm not spoiling exactly what it is, but even if you don't like Red Sonja, you should get it. It's only 25 cents. You might like the twist. It might be cool to you. And that's it. That's the week that is. Um, next week on Thursday, the 22nd, we're going to have Jody Hauser here, who does uh, Mother Panic for Young Animal DC. She also does uh, Faith 
for um, Valiant. And we're going to have her here for a free signing from uh, 1 to 3 on Thursday because she has family in town. So um, it'll be fun. Come meet her. She's great. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.